God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Today, being the third Sunday of Lent, here be the first reading that we have is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. The, the form of covenant God made with Israel followed a pattern that was common in ancient world when an overlord made a covenant with his subjects. God introduced himself to his people by declaring his name and status as Yahweh the Sovereign Lord and recounting to his people what he had graciously done for them. He reminded them that their God was living and active and that the words they were about to hear were a revelation directed from him. After the introduction came the basic covenant obligation summarized in ten is the remembered commandments. They were not laws in legal sense for they carried no penalties. Rather, they were the principles on which the nation's law would be built and by which the nation should live. And today, since we no longer build on this, ten is the remembered principles. We have failed. We have idolized people. We mention more the name of political idols and entertainment celebrities than we mention the word of God. We have mentioned the name of God in vain. People saw. People swearing in to public offices. They swear in the name of God and yet they don't meet the obligation of caring for their neighbor. The first three commandments were concerned mainly with the attitude of God. He alone was the true God. There was no room for and no other. No image of any kind was to be an object of worship, whether used as a symbol of the true God or as a representation of some other false God. God would act in righteous judgment and in his those who rebelled in this way, and against those of succeeding generation who followed the bad example of their ancestors. The sins of one generation would affect the next, but to those who remained faithful, God will prove himself faithful. Yahweh's people were not to misuse his name, as I said earlier, that we swear in his name. We are not to misuse the name of Yahweh, either in swearing to a statement that was not true, or in swearing to a vow that was not kept. They were also to be careful not to use his name irrelevantly, such as when cursing in anger. God showed that people could combine an attitude of reverence towards him with an attitude of care for their own needs. The weekly Sabbath encouraged people to worship God since the day was set apart to him as holy. But at the same time, it benefited them by making sure they had adequate rest for their regular work. As we rest and thank God for what he has done for us in, this, in that week, we are also taking a break and asking him to bless us with energy to carry out the next week. The remaining six commandments dealt with people's duties in the community. They were to be faithful to their family responsibility 
and doing so would help towards a healthy, stable society and ensure for themselves a long and happy life. They were to act with love and consideration towards others by refraining from murder, maintaining purity in sexual relationship, and respecting the marriage institution, respecting other people's right to their possession, refusing to make false accusations, and avoiding the desire for anything belonging to other persons. And thus, we avoid dishonesty, corruption, and other forms of inconsiderate behavior among people. In the second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 22 to 25, the whole idea of salvation from sin through the death of Christ on the cross appears foolish to the average person, but to believers it shows God's power. God's ways has always been different from that of people in general. Whether they be Greek philosophers, Jewish scholars, or just ordinary citizens, people always think their schemes and ideas are full of wisdom, but God shows them up to be foolish. And most of the time, we want to put God into our plans then put ourselves into the plan of God. We plan things and then we say, let us pray for a plan to be fulfilled. It is not the plan of God. And if it is not the plan of God, it cannot come to fruition. We better walk in the plan of God and accept what God presents to us. God in his wisdom saves people by way of the cross and no other. People think this way to be foolish, but no matter how much they try to know God through their own wisdom, they'll never succeed. The Jews want a miraculous sign to prove that Jesus is mighty Messiah, but instead they see him crucified. To them, this shows no power, not power, but weakness. As crucified Messiah is their view of stumbling block, something that they will not believe and that consequently prevent them from receiving God's salvation. As for the Greeks, they consider the whole idea to be mere foolishness. When we look at the way God works, when we look at the way God fulfills his will in our life, we think that it was not supposed to be that way. But God has, al has always been faithful. But to believers, Jews or Greeks, it gives proof of God's power and wisdom. The cross alone can conquer sin and bring salvation. After suffering, we find joy, we struggle, but we achieve. That is the cross, the passion, but with it comes the joy of Easter. In our Gospel today, from the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 13 to 25, this comes right after the wedding feast in Cana of Galilee. From Capernaum, Jesus went to Jerusalem for the Passover. When he visited the temple, he found that its utter court, the court of the Gentiles, was crowded with Jewish merchants and money changers. The merchants were selling animals for sacrifice and the money changers were exchanging foreign money 
for, for money acceptable to the temple authority. Money that was termed as clean money. Acceptable to the temple. The place looked more like a market than a place of prayer. Jesus was so angry at what he saw that he took bold action to cleanse the temple of all the commercial activity. When we talk about the money changer, it's always a way of exploitation because the one who is changing the money will never go at a loss. But the one changing the currency to be accepted in the temple will always be at a loss. Therefore, there were exploiters seated in the temple. Jesus, the Jews, objected to Jesus interfering with the temple and challenged him to perform some miracle as evidence that he had authority from God to act in such a way. When we go to a place and we are put in challenge to the status quo and to the way people believe and act, they want to ask, what authority do you have? Who sent you? Who do you know? So that we can open the door, so that we can accept what you're saying. So who are you? What are you in your country? And they want a miracle. They want miracle meaning a sign because Jesus has had performed a sign in Canaan. He had turned water into wind as a sign of his blood that will be shed. The wine that he will transform into his blood during the Last Supper. As a sign of salvation. The blood to which the Jews believed that was a sign of life. And that in the blood lived life. And therefore, Jesus coming here, he will tell them that after three days, the blood will dry. Like what happened in the wedding. The wine went dry. But in three days... Because Jesus came after three days. Because that's when the wedding was. After three days there was a wedding and Jesus was invited. And therefore after the three days that the wine had dried. Jesus came again and relieved the moment. After three days I will raise this temple again. Talking about the temple of his body. Jesus knew that because of his zeal. For the purity of God's house, the Jews will eventually kill him, but he will rise from the dead and bring in a new era of life for the world. As he has, done, as he has just done in Cana of Galilee, now uh, that life he brought into the celebration, into the world of these new ways, he will on he will also bring that he will revitalize our life. He will kill the sin and die into sin, but will bring us to life into joyous glory of God, as it were in Eden. At that time, few had a genuine belief in Jesus as Savior. Many say they believed in him, but their faith was not soundly based. As today, we are the same. We say we believe in Jesus Christ, but is our faith sound? Or we want to do things that we believe that they will give us a solution? Want to do a novena? Because after the nine days, I believe God going to perform a miracle. I want to do a novena because I want this suffering to end. What if it doesn't end? Do we still have a sound belief in God? Soundly based. People were impressed with Jesus' miracles. And it's so today. We are impressed by hearing that in Jesus' name, we're going to have this. In Jesus' name, 
this will happen and want to keep a ritual adherence because we're going to get some outcome. We are in a business with God. If I believe in God, he will pay me. We are like the money changers and the merchants in the temple. That's what we are in the temple of our Lord, in the churches. That's what we have become. But had we have little idea, as they had little idea of what was involved in being disciples of the Messiah. Jesus could not trust people to be loyal followers in their belief. In him was little more than enthusiasm for his spectacular deeds. We want a Jesus who is a superstar. We want a Jesus who will make miracles and make things happen for us. Jesus is not a superstar. Jesus carries the cross to Calvary and Jesus dies to sin. We too must carry our suffering in joy. But our suffering, our struggles, our challenges, our death into doing what is right, in following the commandment of God, and as Paul says, taking the cross that looks foolish to other people, that is not acceptable today, to stand with our religion and to act for God is not marketable, is not acceptable, is foolishness today. But when we carry that cross to Calvary, when we die and to the things of this world, we shall emerge victorious because we are in the plan of God and we are not putting God into our plans. May God bless us that we may follow his way of suffering that brings joy and not a way of, look, of lukewarmness and a way that seeks for comfort and simplicity. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Have a blessed Sunday and may God bless you always.